It seems like more and more constitutional American values appear to be under attack. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis faces lawsuits for simply banning adult topics for young children in school. And in Kansas City, a teacher was suspended for not using preferred pronouns, basically not referring to little Bobby as Sally. But it also goes deeper than that, and we're now seeing the wokeification of food. I got us donuts. Those are so bad for you. Oh, no. Are they moldy? I mean, no, are they poisoned? No. Are you allergic? No, I'm just saying. Mm. You're judging my food choices based on a false standard of health again, aren't you? Guilty. False standard of health. So donuts are now healthy. Joining us for more is faculty at summit.org and author of Woke Jesus, Pastor Lucas Miles. Pastor, good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're good, Pastor. I just want to react to what we just heard, that sound. I get it. Balanced diet. Don't body shame. Don't shame people in general. But donuts is healthy. That just seems damaging. Look, the left is rewriting everything and uh, every single standard, every single value, every single moral that we have in, in traditional, you know, Judeo-Christian framework or Western world, the left is working to rewrite that. And we're seeing perfect examples of that right here. Pastor, I'm a huge food fact person. I love telling people, oh, this is what's supposed to be healthy. I, I've watched the history of how milk campaigns change. I don't think saying donuts are healthy are going to be a food fact that I'm going to add into my knowledge and tell children or anybody else. I mean, look, you, you know within about 30 seconds of eating them that they're not healthy and the changes they do, the sugar highs and, you know, how you feel afterwards. This this is you don't need to be a scientist or a dietitian in order to understand this. This is pretty basic uh, intelligence here. But yet again, the left is is working on rewriting everything in order to really, I think, just dismantle it and kind of, you know, have this as, as uh, to use Hegelian language, have this phoenix arise out of the ashes. Uh, uh, in order to promote this new world order that they're working on so uh, fervently. Yeah, eat a couple donuts and let us know how you feel after that. Pastor, President yeah, Trump's Save America rally in Ohio, the former president spoke about indoctrination in schools. Wing sickos are pumping toxic anti-American propaganda into the minds of our beautiful youth. They're destroying our youth. The choice this November is simple. If you want to continue this national catastrophe, vote for the radical left Democrats. Children look to adults for what is authority, for what they should be learning, for role models here. People are outraged that parents aren't fighting back. What do parents need to do to protect their children? I think parents need to be extremely vigilant. I mean, they have to be aware of what kids are doing online. They have to be aware of what you know, is happening in kids' schools, in the classroom, in after-school clubs, all of these things. They have to know who their friends are, you know, who they're spending the night at their house with. It's it, it's no longer a world where, you know, you can just sit back and say, hey, be home at 10 and not have to think about it anymore. I think no matter, no matter the age of the child, as long as they're in your house, you have to be aware, you have to be involved. And not just, you know, from an authoritarian, authoritarian type of standpoint, but actually teaching them along the way values. That's one of the beautiful things about being able to be a parent is you're able to really instill godly values in your child. The NPR titled an article about the case for starting sex ed in kindergarten. This just goes to show it doesn't matter what age your children are. When I was going to kindergarten, I'm pretty sure my mom was worried about whether or not I napped and what I was coloring and bringing home and do I know my ABCs. What are parents supposed to do? Look, I, I, this is, it's getting ridiculous. I mean, I can remember when I was, you know, in junior high, it was a big deal because they showed the movie Lord of the Flies and it had, you know, scenes of, you know, kids running around in their underwear or something. And all these parents came in and made a big stink about it. I mean, we are so far past that. It is, it's ridiculous. I mean, this is, this is next level now. This is to a point to where uh, they're no the left is no longer hiding their attentions. There is a specific agenda and that is to, you know, completely, uh, uh, remake uh, what America looks like and what America believes in. This is what we're seeing with the immigration issue. It's what we're seeing, you know, with what's happening in schools with indoctrination. It is happening on every single front, from the church to the to the schoolhouse. And and it's time that America uses their voice, their vote. Uh, and their dollars to really, uh, you know, bring change in this country. You bring up a good point, too, by mentioning books like Lord of the Flies, because as we know, curriculum changes and books get banned and restricted from so schools. We saw Dr. Seuss even be taken out. The children are, what's more damaging here, these books or telling them to eat donuts or these other messages? But, Pastor, what is your message to Americans of faith amid these challenges? 
I think people of faith need to really stand strong during this time. And, you know, what I'm seeing, I mean, you know, I've written about this extensively, is that a lot of our churches are sort of drifting to the left. And so if you're a Bible-believing Christian, you need to make sure that the church that you're attending is a solid church, that they're teaching biblical orthodoxy, that they believe in the Christ of Scripture and not just the social justice warrior Jesus. And so, uh, and you need to use your, you know, where you where you attend, your dollars that you tie to the ministry, those sort of things to support ministries that are really furthering the gospel and not just a woke agenda. I think it starts there. So support what you value, Pastor. You're also the author of Woke Jesus. Can you tell us about the book and when did you realize you needed to write it? Yeah, so my last book, The Christian Left, I started working on, um, you know, really identifying some of these issues in the church. Woke Jesus will be coming out uh, this next year uh, in first quarter. And I'm super excited about it. And, you know, we're seeing that, um, uh, you know, that I think a lot of Americans struggle to understand how we got here. And so what I'm doing in this book is really diving into sort of the historical aspects of where wokeism developed from, specifically from a faith angle and, and showing America what they can do about it.